morning, welcome to day two of your daily wellness. Um, and today we're doing a focus on headstand um, from the card that we picked yesterday. And uh, don't worry if you can't do headstand, if it's not in your practice, this session is going to be kind of almost in two halves. The first half will be preparation that you can use to practice if um, you one day want to do headstand or just to get the same sort of um, benefits. Um, and there'll be some alternatives that you can use to get those benefits. Um, for instance, one of the great things about headstand is that it brings this fresh rush of blood to your head, um, which is really revitalizing and energizing. We can get that in other ways, so I will show you that. And it also works with some pressure points on the top of the head, and again, we can get those in other ways. So the first bit of the class will be like the basics, and then if it's already in your practice, you can follow along to take the next steps towards your headstand, but I don't recommend that unless it's already in your practice. So headstand can be damaging for your neck if you're not doing it properly. So if you haven't done it before and you want to try it, don't, don't do it yet. Contact me when we're back at the gym um, and we'll have a little one-on-one -on -one and I'll show you some um, variations and options and sort of check how you do it. It's always great to have an instructor with you when you're trying it for the first few times just to make sure that you are staying safe and protected um, and also to be aware you know I do headstands sometimes but I also have to see a chiropractor um, just generally from my fitness but she can tell when I've been doing a lot of headstands so if you do have weaknesses in your neck it might just be that this the full headstands are not for you you know it will show up in your body it will add a little bit of tension sometimes um, and yoga is not necessarily about that so if headstands aren't for you don't feel bad don't feel like you're taking a a sort of sissy option there is no sissy in yoga it's all about what feels good for you so lecture over uh, coming into a comfortable seat so you can be cross-legged i'm just choosing a different one today so um it's just different each day you can do that or you can choose the same lengthen up Start to tuck the chin, tuck the lower ribs, open the chest and then grow tall. Elbows grow heavy. This alignment is incredibly important for not, not just a headstand, but for every uh, practice pretty much that we do. For activating all the spinal muscles, all the postural muscles, but particularly if you are doing a headstand, you need to have the vertebra stacked one on top of the other so that there isn't too much tension on the front or back or anywhere on the spine. Good, so we're going to take a few shoulder rolls together. Feel this um, flexion through the chest and then as we come up, squeezing here, as you come down, feel the shoulder blades come together and that lengthening down and the spine just coming into alignment as we take a little tuck and find that length. Two more times. Really notice the sensation, bring it around, bring it down and feel the spine come into alignment. One more. Same with the neck, take a moment, lengthen forwards, lengthen back, chin goes forwards, chin comes back, forwards, back. Now make that a little smaller and smaller until you find that neutral point where you feel like the back of your neck is long, the vertebra are stacked. Take a little flexion side to side. We're not trying to stretch the side of the neck. We actually don't want to do that if you're going to be doing uh, work on the head. So we just want to make sure that the neck is mobile enough to be able to stack in position, but not so flexible that it creates weakness. So again, make it a bit smaller, find that neutral point. And then as you exhale, let go of all your preconceptions of headstand, all that fear that you might feel, um, all of that, oh, I don't like it, I can't do this one, oh, this is a wasted session today. It's not wasted. You'll be able to do the preparation, so don't worry. Let all of those thoughts and feelings go as you exhale. Think only of each moment, of each asana, of each pose that we do, don't get carried away with what's coming next. Good. So one of the things that is good with your headstand is this 
uh, getting the head below the heart. So we're gonna take a few options where you can do this, um, where you can start to wake up through the brain. So coming onto all fours to begin with, spread the fingers, oh no socks. Tuck your toes under, and then start to lift the tailbone. Keep your knees bent, don't worry about that for now. Give your head a little shake, a little nod. Good. And then from here, start to bring in that alignment. So keeping the knees bent as much as you need, push back through the hands, open the chest, lift the tailbone up as high as you can. Lengthening through the spine, thinking what we were doing, lower ribs in, shoulders back and down, chin tuck. So here we're getting that lovely blood flow down into the head, nice and refreshing. You can give your head a little shake or nod or find stillness. You can start to lengthen down through the heels if you can keep that straight spine. If you feel that you know it's too much of a stretch and you, you find that the curve starts to happen, then bend the knees again. Good, so that's a great option from here. Walk the feet up. And again, we've got the head down, below the heart, slowly roll it up. Just give yourself a little moment to let it run back down into your body. Take a little reset. I don't know why I did a shimmy then, but hey, if that's how you want to reset, I don't judge. <laughs> Good. And then again, take it down, chin tucks. Follow down. Now bending the knees generously. Now if we can focus here on hanging and letting that lovely blood flow come to the brain, releasing the neck, or we can bend the knees a little bit more, start to lengthen the spine and try and get that alignment. The chin is tucked, the lower ribs are tucked, shoulders are back and down. Choice is yours, so this is more if we are actually going to go towards our headstand or even if you just want to work on your alignment and create a little bit of heat in the legs. Or we can take a fold over. Or you can switch between. We can inhale to align. And exhale over. Choose your option for about five more seconds. From there, we're going to place the hands on the mat, take it back to knees, take a, a moment in your child pose, so really reach the hands away, separate your knees a little, so that we can come down in between, rest the head on the floor, and take one full round of breath now, all the way in, and all the way out. From here, bring it up. I want you to place your elbows down underneath the shoulders. Bring the hands together and interlace. And find this strength, so we're pressing into the bottom of the hands. We're pressing into the floor. Find that triangular strength into the floor, the triangular grounding. Send the feet away. Plank pose. Long spine, neck tucked. Feel that firm grounding, that firm foundation. Abs drawn in. Hold for five, four, three, two. Bring the knees in. Take a moment to release back. So doing this plank is good. Or uh, one of the variations of coming into headstand, we use this as our grounding, as our strength. Whenever we do headstand, um, a lot of the weight should actually be in the arms, in the hands, in the elbows, or whichever variation you're doing. It's not just dumping your whole weight on your head. So take a moment to release over. And then we come back into it. Now with that focus, 
Imagine that you're trying to squeeze all of the weight into your arms, take the legs away. Strong, powerful, push into the floor. Lengthen out, squeeze the hands together. Feel your biceps and triceps squeeze that power in the shoulders for five, four, three, two, and one. Bring the knees in. Take it back. One round of breath. Release the hands. Bring it up. Give me a little shoulder roll to reset. Good. Take the hands out, spread them nice and wide under the shoulders. Another form of coming into your headstand will be with this foundation. So the hands will be spread wide, will be pressing into the back of every fingertip, every knuckle, particularly into this area of here. We did this yesterday for cat cow. Strong, we're gonna bring them in just a little. Make sure that they're not wider than shoulder width. Okay. Walk the knees in. Take the top of the head down to the floor. Now what you want to get is this soft area on the top of the head. A lot of us will automatically kind of come here. Um, and if we're here, we're gonna end up with kind of this neck position. You want the alignment, which is gonna be right on the top of your head. Don't worry, we're not going into headstand yet. So just focusing on getting the top of your head there. Now you will find that your chin is tucked a lot until we get higher. Maybe you don't get higher, that's fine. So here we are hitting that pressure point on the top of the head. Press with the hands, so we're really pushing with the hands and supporting with the hands. And if this is as far as you come today, this bit is fine. If you want a little balance, if your neck is strong, you know that you're good for it. If you're not, work there. Can't stress it enough. If you're feeling good, you can start to lift up. You can actually bring one knee to each elbow. Make sure we're on the top of your head and we can hold it here. If you are comfortable here, you can lift up one leg and then the other. You can bring your core in lock it in and lift up both feet that is the more advanced bit for that do not lift your feet up if you are feeling tension if you're feeling too much compression in the neck if you're new to putting weight on the head in this way just practice placing the head on the floor and then bring it up and see how that feels Maybe take a little head massage, maybe take a little massage through the base of the skull and a little bit of mobility through the neck. So if this is as far as you want to go today, absolutely namaste to you and amazing, great work. What I will do before we go on to the next part of the class is pick our card for tomorrow so you'll all know what's for tomorrow, whether you continue with the full head stones or not. We have ooh, crow pose tomorrow, which is a balance. Um, but again, there are options for your crow pose for practicing. And we'll actually do some other work tomorrow uh, to go with crow pose. It's, um, it's a great one. Um, I can't actually hold that balance. So you'll see more, me wobble around when we do the actual pose, which will be fun. Um, so for those of you that are finishing the video here, Namaste, see you tomorrow for the rest of you, or for the few of you, or one of you, who wants to have a go at your headstand. We have two ways of coming into it. So option one, um, how we did in our plank where we interlace the fingers and bring the elbows down. So use a wall if you're a bit wobbly, or certainly put lots of cushions on the floor because it does wind you when you roll over. Elbows want to be about shoulder width, possibly a little narrower. Top of the head, we're going to place just so that we're kind of cradling the head with the hands. So we're going to be just inside the hands, pressing into the elbows. Use the arms to lift. So most of the weight is on the forearms, into the hands, into the elbows. If you're here, abs are in. We start to lift into the toes. 
kind of like a down dog. Walk it in. You will get to a point where it almost feels natural to start lifting off a little bit. Now, we do not kick up, okay? You want control every step of the way. So we don't kick the feet up when we come up. We use the abdominals to pull yourself into alignment, okay? So if you're with me this far, if your neck's feeling strong, if this is in your practice already, I can't stress enough, if you're new, do not do this next bit. If we're up, we walk to in. Use your core. You might find that you're in and out. This might be far as you go. Or maybe you hit the wall, I find it. You try and control. Maybe you just keep hitting the wall. Like I'm clearly going to do on camera today. Your level, your pace, and it takes a lot of practice, not all at once. Really, really be mindful of your neck and how your neck feels, um, because it will put a strain on. Um, so option two of coming into it is similar to when we were in cow pose yesterday. We hold the hands, spread the fingers, elbow dis uh, elbow shoulder distance, the head comes down. Like we did a moment ago, we bring knees to elbows. Make sure you're on the top of the head, lifting up. From here, if you want to extend, you can start to take the legs up. Ooh. This is like a precursor for tomorrow where I'm just going to fall over the whole time. It takes a lot of practice. I personally don't do a lot of headstand in my practices because I don't yoga for progression. I yoga for wellness and although sometimes it's fun to push yourself a little bit, um, I find that the gentler poses actually suit my needs much more. I get my workouts in other ways, I get my challenge in other ways, but it's really up to you. I hope you have enjoyed today's practice um, and crow pose tomorrow. Thank you for joining me. Namaste. See you tomorrow. Felix Dose of Daily Wellness.